Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. This video will be all about raid named loot drop rates and changes we've seen in raid loot drop rates in the new raid, Defiler of the Just. If you haven't noticed, the new raid, Defiler of the Just, actually drops loot in the raid chest at reasonable rates. We no longer have the minuscule, nearly non existent named loot drop rates that we've seen in the past three raids, Mark of Death, Fire on Thunder Peaks, and Temple of the Deathworm. What we've seen, what it appears to me from running the new raid on the live servers, is that drop rates have seemed to have gone back to what they were prior to the Thunder Home update. They seem to be more attuned to what we saw with the original Eberron raids that we had prior to Menace of the Underdark expansion. You can expect a couple, a piece or two on even normal to drop. Now let's talk a little bit about the raid drop rates and how they've changed over time and the different raid named loot drop rate philosophies we've seen in the past several years in DDO. Now I just mentioned the drop rates of the old Eberron raids. They were at least I know this the the file of just has not been out too long, but they seem to be somewhat equivalent to what we're seeing now with the file of the just. But back a year a year or two ago, when the Thunder Home update hit, the drop rates changed for the first time. We saw we're not sure why, but what we saw was raid drop rates go way down. In those three raids I mentioned, the drop rates are extremely low. You pre you really can't depend on the the chest to get, actually get your loot. You have to depend on the twentieth reward list. Now, you you could get it in the in the raid chest, but you'd have to be extremely lucky. But now, why did these drop rates change? We're not sure why they changed when the Thunder Home update came out, but we can speculate. Some of the raids were the raids are getting shorter. Some of the raids like Thunder Peaks and Mark of Death are really short, and the low drop rates could be to compensate for the short length of the raids. Yes, the drop rates are low, but you can ex access that raid chest much more quickly because the rates are low. And it could have also been to account for the popularity of raid bypass timers, whether that's through duping or or through uh, through duping or through legitimate acquisitions of the raid bypass timers through buying them in the store. They really aren't that expensive. You can spend twenty dollars or so and get us, you know, a nice uh, little stack of them. Uh, or it could have been uh, another legitimate acquisition was the anniversary event, which you legitimately could get a lot of timers just from the event without even duping or doing any of that shen you know, shenanigans. But overall, it was the changes we saw in the raid drop rates in the Thunder Home update was in some way or form an attempt to increase longevity into content, which has been a major issue for a while definitely ever since raid bypass timers were introduced and this was exacerbated a lot when they were unfortunately duped which caused massive damage to DDO's endgame and is still causing massive damage to DDO's endgame so whatever the case was did these lower drop rates work did they help increase content longevity did they help liven up the endgame uh, the answer to that is no the issue was, and still is, that when designing these raid drop rates for content longevity, when they're trying to increase content longevity by reducing these drop rates, they did they did it without changing the 20th reward list. This meant players adapted to these new low drop rates, and they adapted by, in large part, abandoning hard and elite, and they just ran normal. It more or less turn raids into a grind where you just instead of actually going for loot in the in chest you just forget about it and you just grind out normals to get to the 20th reward list where you'll get a guaranteed selection of named items so in effect to increase content longevity we actually lost incentives to run the harder difficulties take let's take deathworm for instance Epic Lead and Epic Hard had high, higher flogs and drop rates, but not enough to encourage those difficulties. And when normal is so much faster than elite, it really doesn't matter that the elite drop rate is higher when you get a guaranteed 10 flogs on your 20th reward list. And 
while the drop rate of flogs might be lower on normal, it's still not so much lower as to completely, dis completely discourage normal and encourage higher drop rates. So let's take 20 runs for example. If the drop rate of normal which seem for death worm flogs, which seems to be about 50%, means you'll get about 10 flogs in 20 runs. Combine that with an extra 10 on the end reward list, that means you can expect 20, run, 20 flog stints and 20 runs of Temple of the Death Worm. Assuming, again, you take those 10 flog stints on the 20th reward list. Now let's compare this to Elite. The drop rate for Shadow Dragon flog stints on Elite is guaranteed. It's 100% for a flog. So in 20 runs of Epic Elite Death Worm, you will get 30 flogs. So that means for your time, for your effort in running 20 epic elites instead of 20 epic normals, you will get 33%, you will get actually 50% more flocks because you will get 30 instead of 20. But it takes so much longer to run epic elite and there's also other factors like uh, lag for instance, lag wipes are a major concern and legitimate wipes. When it comes down to it, for most players, it's just better flogs per minute to just Zerg normal. Now, there are exceptions to this, and you could definitely debate this because there are so many factors, such as player skill, uh, lag wipes, which will you have a higher chance of a lag wipe in Epic Elite because when lag hits your party on Epic Elite, you're going to die a lot faster than if lag hits your party on Epic Normal. So there's a lot of factors to consider, but I think it's safe to say that for the average player, Epic Normal is a better flogs per minute than Epic Elite. So factors like this have really lent themselves to discouraging higher difficulties and encouraging normal gift, dif encouraging just normal grinding. So I don't think this system of lowering the drop rates on normal really helped. And while I know that Deathworm analogy talks about flogs and not named loot, it's kind of the same thing. There's, it's the same issue. There's not enough incentive to run Epic Elite or Epic Hard because of how strong the end reward, 20th reward lists are right now. The drop rate in the chest just doesn't really matter. So after Thunderhome, when we got Mark of Death, the system mostly remain unchanged. I know there's a little few incentives in there not to not to uh, burn through it on Epic Normal because you get better drop rates for the uh, tapestries on the higher difficulties but still there's not much incentive there to not run Epic Normal. You may as well just market depth is so short and raid bypass timers are so readily available you better you, you can just go ahead and just run 20 normals and it just you, there's just no incentive there to run Epic Elite. However, okay, when we got the new raid though to Fire of the Just, we did see this big new change. The old drop rates have come back. So why did this happen? Why are we seeing a resurgence of drop rates? Did the devs see that the low drop rate design wasn't working in Deathworm and Fire Peaks? Will going back to the drop rates work now that all the duping of raid bypass timers has been fixed? I don't think so. For one, people are still used to running 20 normals for their loot. This is just the mindset of players currently. On Thalanus, I see almost all normal runs for Defile of the Just. And it's still faster to just grind out 20 normals for your guaranteed piece of loot rather than depend on the higher drop rates. Why would you mess with the luck factor in a chest when you can just run 20 normals quickly of the fire of the just the fire of the just takes what like 10 15 minutes to run so you can get 20 normals done in a single play session or at least at the least two or three if you're really serious about it so why would i sit there and run the raid just on higher difficulties depend uh, and try to depend on that luck there's just no incentive to run the higher difficulties because i can get i can get my guaranteed piece of loot by just running 20 normals so the real issue here is that the 20th list provide way too much incentive to run normal when combined with the the massive availability of the rate bypass timers to let you run the rate as many times as you want in a day. And I know in the Fire Lord Adjust there are some new mythic bonuses that add some PRR bonuses and such, MRR, things like that on that you can get on the higher difficulties, but it's not enough, it's not near enough incentive. 
And even though the duping seems to have been fixed a while ago, there's still a huge supply of raid bypass timers existing in the economy, and there's so many that were created during the duping era that they're not going to die out in time. If you're, if there's people around that are saying that, hey, just give it time, eventually people will run out of timers. No, that's not going to happen. Way, way too many of them were duped for them to run out in any reasonable time fashion. So bypass timers are still existing in the economy. They're still prevalent. People still have them. And people are still, I'm still seeing them handed out in pugs. And then there also are legitimate ways of acquiring these by just buying them. So the real issue here, as I've mentioned a few times, is that bypass timers and the 20th list are just too much of an incentive to run normal. There's too much synergy there. And until we see a change to those two things, I think attempts to alter player behavior by modifying chest drop rates will be in vain because it's so much faster and more efficient to just grind out 20 normals instead of relying on luck. So if we ever want incentives to actually run hard or elite again, either bypass timers need a nerf, or the 20th list need a nerf, or both. Something has got to give. Thing is, you're not supposed to depend on your 20th list to get your loot. When 20th lists were originally introduced, the original intent was, hey, you know, you've gotten really unlucky on your drops, you've run this raid three for three months, so we're just going to go ahead and throw you a bone and give you what you wanted. And remember, back then, when the 20th lists were originally introduced, there were no raid bypass timers, so it took you three months at a minimum to get to your 20th list, because you could only run it once every three days. But as time has gone on, the original intent of these 20th lists has become undermined. It's not supposed to be your it's not supposed to be a primary source of loot. The original intent was that this just be a fallback in case you get really unlucky in getting the loot in your chest. So as we've seen this change happen, we've seen a lot of negative effects on the rating scene, the worst of which are poor content longevity and no incentives to run higher difficulties. This has turned raids into a temporary grind fest instead of a long-lasting in-game activity with a consistent rating community. So all in all, the new drop rates are a nice improvement, but they still ignore the huge elephant in the room that is massively harming content longevity and harming our in-game, and that's 20th list being so good and raid bypass timers being so readily available because of duping, and to a lesser extent, legitimate acquisitions of raid bymer bypasses through the anniversary of NDDOs or purchases, that there's just no longevity to raiding. There's no reason to stay at in-game because the grind in getting that in-game gear, and that's what in-game's all about, grinding out that gear, it's been shortened so much. And until they touch the 20th list or the raid bypass timers, that's not going to change. So what happens is we see a spike in raiding as soon as a raid's released, and then after a short spike, it plummets because what happens is people just grind out 20 normals, get their loot, and then stop running the raid instead of those 20 runs taking months and months and months and months because of being limited to running that content once every three days. So while I feel like this update's drop rate changes are nice, it does not really it doesn't really solve anything. And I feel like the devs with this change are desperately doing whatever they can to avoid addressing the huge elephant in the room. It seems like they're desperately hoping that upping these drop rates by a little bit will help fix things. And it seems like they are absolutely terrified of making a change because they don't want to upset players. And that's, you know, that's a reasonable stance for them to have. They want to make sure that any major change, and if they touch raid bypass timers or 20th list, it will be a major change. They want to make sure that any major change that's going to piss off players, or at least a segment of players, is done for good reasons and that it will in fact be good for the game in the long run. And they apparently are not convinced of that quite yet. But for me, honestly, their stance is and their timidness has become extremely frustrating. I want them to. St I, I firmly believe that raid by bypass timers are terrible for the game, and that twentieth lists are too good. And I want the developers to stand up and do what I feel is best for the game. And I feel that by doing nothing, they're doing far more damage to the game because there's just no longevity to raiding. There's no end game. People grind out what they want in a short time and quit raiding. And without an end game, 
the quality of DDO as a whole has dipped. Eventually, this issue will have to be addressed. The synergy between the 20th list and the raid bypass timers is just too good, and it needs to be toned down either by nerfing or proxy nerfing one or both. Nobody likes nerfs. I hate nerfs, and I hate the idea of having to restrict when people raid, but in this situation, it's it's needed. It's better for the game in the long term if people don't just grind out what they want in a few days and quit because we need players in this game. We need people to stick around and we need incentives for people to log into the game regularly and that's what, while arbitrary, the three-day timer provided and that's why it's so bad that it's gone now. So it's not gone, you know what I mean. When I say it's gone, I mean that it's not much of an issue now because it's easily easy for anyone to acquire rate dive has timers. So Overall, drop rates in this new raid are a nice tweak, but I still think it's ignoring the major elephant in the room, and I want to see that changed. Guys, I know this video has been a little negative, a little ranty, but these are topics that need to be talked about. I say what I say because I am passionate about the game, and I want to see it improve. And the only way it can improve is if the player base talks about these issues and gives developers the feedback they need to determine what direction is best for DDO to travel down in the future. So as always, please leave me a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you next time.